Hey, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so we're going to have another couple of examples that we're going to do. Uh, we're looking this time, we're looking at perfect competition. So I have a couple of examples that I want to, to go through with you, and I hope that this will help you. So let's have a look. Uh, the marginal cost of this firm, so we'll begin and say this is a perfect competitive industry, and the firm's marginal cost uh, curve is uh, is 3 plus 2Q and then we have a market price of 9 so the first question is what level of output will the firm produce at okay so with the firm if it wants to maximize its profit will produce at um, an output where marginal revenue and marginal cost will be the same so we know for a perfect competitive firm the marginal revenue is the same value as price, so that's 9, equals uh, marginal cost. So in this case, it will be 3 plus 2Q. So if we uh, solve for Q, uh, we take 3 to the other side, so that means it's 6 equals 2Q. So that means we get Q equals three just make it a small q there we go okay so we have the quantity so the firm will produce at quantity of three and the price is nine okay so the next question what is the firm's producer surplus okay so the best way to answer this is to imagine you look at the uh, at a graph the graph showing the demand curve and the, sh uh, and the price. So how does that look? Okay, so it will look something like this. Okay, so we know we have a price. And the price is set as 9. So we can actually just include uh, the value 9. Uh, let's just include a text box here. Just a normal one, make it smaller. And then we say 9. Okay, so this is the value 9. More or less there. Okay, so this is 9. So we want to know, we want to calculate the area of the producer surplus. So it's the area below the price and to the top or above the uh, supply curve. The supply curve, we know that the supply curve is our marginal cost curve. So you remember that we, when we did chapter 8, we looked at the marginal cost curve and we said uh, the, the marginal cost, if it's above the average variable cost, that represents the supply curve for the firm. He will then go and start to produce from that point onwards, any price above that value. Okay, so the, marg the, the marginal cost curve represents our supply curve. So what we need to do is we need to calculate this area here, the producer surplus. So we know that the quantity that we're going to produce is 3. We just copy that one, paste it here, and we say 3. So that is the quantity, that is the price. Now, the only thing that we require in order to do that is we need to get the value of the marginal cost curve if we do not produce anything. So that's, what's the value of marginal cost with no output? So that's fairly easy to do. So we just take the marginal cost curve. So in this case, marginal cost equals 3 plus 2Q. So we want to say, if we produce no output, if we have no output, what is the marginal cost value going to be? So that means we're just going to insert 0 into our quantity. And if we do that, we get a marginal cost of 3. 
of 3. Okay. So that means, take this, copy, paste it. We put that next to that line there. So there we've, we have all the information that we require to do this analysis and to get the answer. So the producer surplus, it's the difference between 9 and 3. So that's 6 multiplied by 3. So let's just say, so, so that's, um, so producer surplus equals 6 multiplied by 3, and then we divide this by 2 to get our producer surplus value. 6 times 3 is 18 divided by 2, so that means producer surplus equals 9. There we go. So we have our value. So it's 9 rand, the total producer surplus. So that actually means this whole area here, we can shade that and we say that's the producer surplus. Okay. Let's move on to a next example. Okay, so here is a, another example. Okay, let's just quickly get my face in here. Okay, so we have a firm. It has a cost function. Uh, so cost is 4q to the power 2 plus 16 and then the marginal cost is 8q which is quantity so we want to get a couple of of costs uh, values the first one variable cost fixed average average variable and then average fixed cost so we're going to quickly get these values based on the cost function that we have available and in front of us so let's start with variable cost Okay, so variable costs. We can actually see from the equation we can derive the variable cost. So the 4q to the power 2 is indicative of the variable cost and the 16 shows us the fixed cost. If we do not have any output, we still have to pay that. So the variable cost is 4q to the power 2. Okay, that's fairly straightforward and that's the value that we have. Because we do not have a price uh, we cannot, uh, and a quantity, we cannot calculate the exact value of the variable cost. So in this case, this is sufficient. And the fixed cost, do we just set that to so that is 16. Average cost, what's the equation to get average cost? Average cost equals uh, total cost divided by quantity. So, um, so to get total cost, we, we actually have the value for total cost, it's in the equation. So that means total cost equals, so it is, and I'm going to put this in brackets, 4q to the power 2. And let me just copy and paste the equation copy paste and then we say divide by q because that's what average cost is okay, so you have your total cost which is represented in your cost uh, function and you divide that with the quantity the total quantity that you produce so actually what we get then is we get total cost equals so if we divide both individual uh, on both sides of the plus sign with Q, we get 4 Q, so one of the Qs uh, is cancelled out, plus 16 divided by Q. Okay, so the 16 is now divided by Q. Okay, and, and, that's, and that's our answer. And this should, sorry, this should be average cost A. Eh? It should not be total cost. Okay, there we go. So this is our answer. Let's just make that red and we highlight that. We look at average variable cost. Average variable cost. So it's average. Uh, so it's variable cost divided by the quantity. So we look at average variable cost. That means our variable cost is 4q to the power 2. And we divide that by Q. 
So that means average variable cost in this case will be 4 Q because one of the Qs get cancelled out because it's one above the line, one below the line. Below the line. And that's our answer.